We can find the row echelon form of a matrix using Gaussian elimination, if we don't mind fractions, or Fang Chang reduction, if we don't mind large numbers. What if we don't want to work with fractions or large numbers? Unfortunately, we can avoid them as well, if you don't mind doing additions and subtractions. Remember, the universe rarely gives us something for nothing. Everything comes at a price. To avoid fractions and large numbers, we'll rely on the Euclidean algorithm. To find the greatest common divisor of two numbers, don't factor. Factoring is a hard and easy problem in mathematics. It only seems easy because we're only ever given easy numbers to factor. Instead, we use the Euclidean algorithm. One form of the Euclidean algorithm is the following. To find the greatest common divisor of two numbers p and q, let the smaller number be the subtrahend, repeat subtractedly until you can't, then lather, rinse, repeat. The last non-zero number is the greatest common divisor. So if we want to find the greatest common divisor of 285 and 75, the smaller number is 75, so we begin by subtracting 75 until we can't. And so we can do that once, twice, three times. Now, we can't subtract 75 from 60, so we subtract 60 from 75. And we can do that once, but we can't subtract 60 again. So we'll make the smaller number our subtrahend, and so we'll subtract 15 from 60. And we can do that once, twice, three times. And in fact, if we subtract 15 from 15, we get 0. And so the last non-zero number will be 15, and that'll be our greatest common divisor. Now, note that in our subtractions, we sometimes subtracted the same number multiple times. So we're actually doing a division with a remainder. When we subtracted 75 three times from 285 and got 60, we were actually doing the division 285 divided by 75 is 3, remainder 60. We subtracted 60 once, so that 75 divided by 60 is 1 with remainder 15, and we would have been able to subtract 15 four times, so that 60 divided by 15 is 4, remainder 0. And from this viewpoint, it's the last non-zero remainder that's our greatest common divisor. To apply the Euclidean algorithm, we should actually use the repeated subtraction. It's actually easier than trying to do the division, but keep in mind that the number of times you subtract is the quotient. Both Gaussian elimination and Fang Chang are awkward if the pivot and the leading entry of a row have no common divisors. In Gaussian elimination, we'd have to introduce fractions. In Fang Chang, we'd get large numbers. But since we can add or subtract any rows, we can use the Euclidean algorithm to reduce the leading entry. And if we begin with the matrix of integers, we end with the matrix of integers. So let's find a row echelon form of this matrix. So we can begin by subtracting the first row from the second. And while this does give us leading entry 1, and we could switch the first two rows for reasons we'll want to avoid switching rows. But instead, we'll subtract the smaller number from the larger. What that means is we'll subtract the second row from the first. Now this gives us a pivot of 1 in our first row, so now we can do the usual Gaussian elimination thing, we'll subtract the first row from the second, and 7 times the first row from the second.
And while we could have these negative leading coefficients, for convenience we'll change the signs in the second and third rows, which will give us our first step in our row reduction. Now our second row pivot is 11, and that is the smaller number, so we note that we can subtract 11 from 62 five times. So we'll subtract the second row from the third row five times and get... Now the leading entry in the third row is smaller, so we'll subtract the third row from the second. And now the leading entry in the second row is smaller, so we'll subtract the second row from the third. Again, the leading entry in the third row is smaller, so we'll subtract the third row from the second. This gives us a pivot of 1, so now we can subtract the second row from the third three times. And again, while we don't have to, let's multiply by negative 1 to get leading coefficients positive and get our next step in the row reduction process. And you can't avoid fractions forever. Let's go ahead and make that leading coefficient of the third row 1 to get our final step in our row echelon form. Now, if the leading entries of two rows have common factors besides 1, then we'll be able to eliminate one leading coefficient completely through repeated subtraction. Again, since we're trying to avoid switching rows, it's best if the zero leading coefficient is in the lower row. For example, if we want to find the row echelon form of this matrix, we'll subtract the first row from the second. We'll subtract the second row from the first. And we'll subtract the first row from the second. Looking at our first and third rows, we see that we can subtract the first row twice from the third, so we'll do that subtraction. And again, we could shift this third row up to the top, but instead we'll subtract it from the first, and then subtract the first from the third. Now subtract 6 times the second row from the third to get a row echelon form of the matrix. And we can divide by the leading coefficient to make all of our pivots 1. 